Okay, folks. <laughs> All right, so here's where we're going to pick up what was the problem we left off on Monday. So <clears throat> we're going to take this from, um, I hate to say vertex form, but uh, the other form. No, con general conic is standard, right? So we'll call it vertex. We're going to take it from this form into general conic form, right? But the way that we're going to do this, we're not going to find the LCM, Okay. We're not going to find the LCM, the least common multiple, right? We're going to go ahead and just, we're going to take our denominators, and we're going to multiply them together. And when we multiply them together, that's going to give us a number to multiply everything by to clear our fractions, right? So first things first, what's 36 times 9? How much? Thanks, Jay. So 324 goes here. And 324 goes here. Now, 324 came about because we took 36 times 9. So what's going to happen is 324 divided by 36 is going to leave you this. Thirty-three twenty-four divided by 9 is 36. And then we got x minus 8 squared equals 324, right? Now, some things I want to talk about on this. Right, we get to there, we had some people that were making some very simple mistakes because they just haven't really thought about PEMDAS. We do not distribute that 9 nor that negative 36 before we expand it. That is a big no-no. Had a couple of people between the classes do that. Ladies and gentlemen, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we first have to expand the y minus 4 squared. And if we do the a minus b, the polynomial theorem for binomial uh, two factors are the same, then we're going to have 9 bracket. Well, that is uh, y squared. y times negative 4 is what? Negative 4y times 2 is negative 8y. And then that becomes a positive 16, okay? We have to expand that first before we multiply it by the 9. <laughs> Where'd I get what now? Where'd I get 8? Well, it's a squared minus 2 times ab, right? So if you think about this, we said square the first one, boom, and then multiply these two together. y times negative 4 is... Negative 4y times 2. Use that power up there as indicated. Okay, i got to multiply it by 2, right? So that's how we get negative 8y. Okay. Why is it times 2? Because you're going to basically get two factors of negative 4. When you were to expand it, you'd have negative 4. You have y squared minus 4y minus 4y plus 16. So that minus 4y, when you combine like terms, gives you negative 8. So that's why. Okay? Good question. All right. So here we go. We've got minus 36, big brackets, right? So we do what? Here's your a and here's your b. So that's x squared minus, let's see, x times negative 8. What's x times negative 8? Negative 8x times 2. Negative 16x, right? And then the 8 squared is 64. Good job, Jay. And then 324. Okay, now we can distribute. Okay, now we can distribute our 9 and our 36. Negative 36, okay? So when we do this, that gives me 9y squared minus 72y. What's 70, uh, 9 times 16? Huh? 144? Good. Minus 36x squared, right? So I'm taking all of this times all of that. So 30, negative 36 and negative 16 give me positive 576x, right? And then 36 and negative 36 and 64 give me what? 
2304. Thank you. Okay. Equals 320 what? Four, right? So what? We got to combine like terms. The only like terms that we have are just the numbers. Okay. So what is one positive 144 and negative 2304? Negative what now? How about I do this instead of having to rewrite it? How about I take, and that is, uh, say it again, negative what now? 2,160 equals 324. Guys, if we subtract 324 over here, then what is that going to give me? Two thousand what? Eighty four. All right. So this little work I done right here is basically combining like terms and moving that over to the other side. That way I don't have all the other stuff, right? But look what I do have to go back and put in. I got to turn around and put all these where? Well, not that one. And then that one, right? So 9y squared minus 72y minus 36x squared plus 576x. There you go. I just didn't want to have to write all those four components again. Does that make sense? Until I had to, which is the last thing. Is everybody clear on how I worked that? It's clear as mud. Yeah. I went ahead and combined my like terms over here, set it equal to 324, move to 324 over to get me my final number, right? So then I just brought down my variables. You can write your variables again if you want to and kind of move all that. That's fine. I was just, I mean, I'm just being lazy today. So that's what you don't want to do, like just bring over the two things to the worksheet for two. Okay. On the worksheet, they're using the LCM. Okay. I don't care. I like this because if you take your denominators and multiply them together, you're clearing your fractions, right? If you were to graph that, Marissa, we would get the same thing. But it's just scaled up by a factor. So is it in lowest? No, but it's an equivalent. Okay. What do they have for their y squared on the answer? Just y. So if you took a nine out of all that, you would get. All right. So hold up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna look at number twelve. So we're gonna take everything that we've learned thus far and apply it, and hopefully you've been successful. So what's thirty-six times four? One forty-four, right? So I'm multiplying everything in here by one forty-four. And the really cool thing is the four comes up and the thirty-six goes over, right? That's why I like this. And you get the following, right? How about your expansion techniques and skills? Are they starting to are you starting to use the A and B? I mean, guys, it, it's uh you can write them twice and do four, that's fine, but I really believe that you are capable of doing this very proficient. So that's y squared, y times 10 is 10y, times 2 is 20y, and then plus 100, good, minus 36, that's x squared, minus 7x times 2 is negative 14x, plus 49, um, equals 144. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about these calculators real quick so that you understand something, because you need to understand how your calculator works. If you take a negative in here and square it, you're going to get a negative result. Okay? So please be aware of that. You better put it in parentheses when you're squaring a negative number. Or understand that when you square a negative number, it should always return a positive, right? So please be aware of that. All right. So we're distributing. That's 4y. 
squared plus 80y plus 400 minus 36x squared. What's 36 and 14? 500 and what? 504? And then 36 and 49 is negative what? 1064? All right. Now, you want to go ahead and do your numbers? Yeah? All right. So we've got uh, 400 and negative uh, 1764. So that is with 1364, right? 1364, right? Negative 1364 equals 144. And then we subtract it, right? So that's going to give me zero here. And what does this give me? 1508, 1508. Good. That's a negative 1508. And then all of this comes down, right? So that's uh, 4y squared. Boom. Now, if you were to check your answer on the worksheet, on the worksheet, what is the answer for, or what is the coefficient that they have for the y squared? Is it just y squared? So let's just look. Yeah, they just got a y squared there, right? Yes. So if you go back over here, and you will go, I want to check mine against the answers that are on the thing. If you divide everything by 4, guess what, guys? You should get exactly what's on that sheet if you've done it correctly, right? But I, I'm okay with it like that. I'm okay with it being scaled up in an equivalent equation, right? I'm good with that. Yeah? All right. Okay. Now we're going to look at writing equations given certain things on the hyperbola. Okay, so we're talking about vertices. Hey, focus here. We're talking about vertices. We're talking about foci. So our first thing is we don't know whether this is orientated left or right or up or down, right? So I'm going to graph my vertices first. And looking at this, I mean, I can tell just by looking at this that it's going to be left to right because my y values are repeating, right? They are the same, so therefore it's a horizontal line, right? So if I think about this, I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to put um, negative 14, 2, and then I'll put right here negative 4, 2. Okay, now my foci happen to be on the outside of my vertices, not in the inside, okay? They're, go, they're much further. That C value is much, much further. So I'm going to be over here at uh, 4, 2, and then over here at negative 22 and 2. Now, this right here kicked a lot of people's behind on the ellipses. So we're going to make sure we do this and do this right and, and make sure that you are – Solid. This right here is the center. It is an H and a K. Guys, I know what my K value is for the center. It's what? It's 2. Because the 2 is repeating across everything. It's a horizontal, right? So we know that that is 2. Now, how far is it from negative 14 to negative 4? It's 10 spots. So, guys, 10 is not my A. No, no, no. And a lot of people had that problem on ellipses. They were, they were like, 10, 10 squared. There you go. Uh-uh. That 10 represents this whole length, okay? That whole length is 10. So that means 5 is on one side and 5 is on the, that's right. So that's 5 here and then 5 here for a total of 10. So, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm at negative 4 and I go down 5 places, that's going to leave me at negative what? 9. Or if I'm at negative 14 and I go up 5 places, I'm at negative 9, 2, right? Ladies and gentlemen, you just found the center, the H and K, of that hyperbola. 
The other thing that I have to find is the B because I need B squared. But they've only gave me an A and a C, right? Because the foci is the C. So how far is it from how far is it from negative 22 all the way over to 4? It's 26, right? The whole length, that whole length from foci to foci is 26. So half of that is how much? Thank you. So 13 and 13 for a total of 26. Now, guys, look. A, B, C. You told me that A was 5. I don't know what B is, but you told me C was what? Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to find the B. I have this wonderful equation right here called C squared equals A squared plus B squared. We call that the Pythagorean theorem. It's crazy like that. It's using stuff that we've done before. So... This will be 5 squared plus 13 squared. No. My bad. Well, let's do this. Let's rewrite it so that it's what? Yeah, we can't. We'll just do this. Here. So that's 13. We'll just plug it in. My brain's not working today. 5 squared plus B squared, right? And then we go 169 equals 25 plus B minus 25. That's 144, right? Equals B squared. So B equals what? Thank you. So because this thing is orientated left and right, now we can write the equation. Give me 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. 30 seconds. That's all I want. So we go x plus 9 squared minus y, uh, y minus 2 squared equals 1. This is a squared, so that's 25. This is b squared, so that is 144. You have six of those, I think. You need to know. Eight. There's eight of them? Six, okay. There you go, folks.